Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning, morning. This is Warren Redlick. I want to talk about Dark Elon and Tesla. Before I dive into that, first thing I'll say is please check out my book. Shelby Hits the Fan it is now public on Amazon. You can buy it in paperback. You can buy it in Kindle. In the U.S., it's $2.99 in pa uh, Kindle and $4.99 in paperback. I think it was a top 10 bestseller in the two-hour reads list. It's short. It's short. It's not very long. But uh, novel, uh, prepper fiction. And I'll, I'll do another video about it soon. And I, of course, there's my old book, Fair DUI, that uh, very well-reviewed nonfiction book about drunk driving law. I think there's a link to Fair DUI in the description below. But go to uh, Amazon and search for Shelby Hits the Fan. Check it out. I'm hearing a lot of good things from people who've enjoyed reading it. Okay. So, uh, and another quick note. Uh, it's possible that the Model 3 refresh is real. I was, I mean, I live in Nagoya and I walked past the Tesla store last night on my way home from an event. And uh, the Tesla store was closed, but the Model 3 refresh is very clearly visible and the headlights do look different than the old Model 3. So it's possible they refreshed the Model 3. Uh, I may have gotten that one wrong. I'm just saying it's possible. It's possible that I got that one wrong. So, um, Dark Elon. Um, Tesla had its Q3 earnings call. Uh, I did a video about it, which I thought was pretty straightforward. I thought it was generally a positive uh, call. As you know, I'm, I tend to be super positive about Tesla, but I, I'm struggling to see why people are freaking out. Uh, Elon lost $30 billion in just over two days. Like the stock has never gone up and down before. This is the first time. This is the first time that the stock has gone down. It didn't drop from 400 to 108, like not that long ago. Like, Wow, it dropped from like, I don't know, 250 to 210. Like this is like a, it dropped from 400 to 108. And you think 250 to 210 is a big deal? Like how long have you been on this ride? I've been on this ride for so long. It's like, you know, it goes up, it goes down. I, I've been on the ride since 2016. And I, you know, I have a family member who freaked out, bought an S&P 500 ETF and couldn't handle the volatility for a week and sold, sold the fund and moved back into a bank account, a savings account. Uh, if you can't um, accept, I, I think my conversation with Amit went really well, disease Kodak. I didn't think he was bad at all. Um, if, you, if you expect to buy a high growth stock and expect it to not fluctuate, to not have ups and downs, then you're in the wrong game. If you want a stock that isn't going to have wild ups and downs, then buy utility stocks and get your dividends and don't get any growth. Right? I mean, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the option. If you want to play high growth and you want to see your you know, $1,000 turn into $5,000, recognize there's risks associated with it, and, and you've got you to go with the up and down. Jim Whitehead says, Elon seemed less optimistic than normal, so he was called dark by the media clowns. Neutral doesn't get clicks. I don't think he was any darker than usual. I don't think he said anything negative that we didn't already know. He was very critical about interest rates. That's not new. He's been complaining about interest rates for months. He was critical about the wars. He's been complaining about the wars for months. There's nothing he said that was negative that was new. There was a lot of positive stuff that a lots of people ignored. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through some... I, I was going to just go straight with just a rant. But before I... Uh, you know, for the, I had 15 minutes. I was going through uh, X, a.k.a. Twitter. And I found a bunch of stuff, but like, you know, Elon's earnings call, Elon Musk's concerns about the economy, Elon sounds pessimistic note about economy. He's been saying this for months. Like, are, who is not? How do you not know that he's been saying? And then he rants about work from home folks again. Like, well, I mean, you ask him a question. The thing with Elon the, the, my take on Elon, when, when people interview him or when people ask him questions, so, you know, the earnings call, people ask questions and he responds to questions. It's like prompt engineering with chat GPT. You, and honestly, I think all of life is like, I've, I've like changed my whole view of life. Like everything we do, you're, you want to pick up girls, you, you're basically playing prompt engineering with women. I mean, I don't, I'm not very good at that game, but apparently like there's this whole genre of videos on YouTube called uh, uh, pickup artist videos and, and, and there's all this writing about how to pick up women. There's a book called The Game or something like that. Um, you know, you can look at all of life as prompt engineering, I suppose. 
the thing with Elon is if you ask him the wrong question, it's like pressing play on a pre-recorded message that he's going to talk about, you know, accelerating the transition to sustainable energy, or he's going to go off on interest rates because interest rates are high. And that is very clearly a problem for people who sell large manufactured objects that are typically financed. But yeah, if you don't see that that's a problem, I mean, we were trying to sell our house and we had problems selling our house. We did finally get it sold because people couldn't get mortgage. You know, you, you're on it. We're in a, you're in a 3% mortgage in your house somewhere else and you want to move to Florida, but now you got to get a 7% mortgage. Well, the payments are going to be a lot higher. It's, it's very frustrating. And the same thing is true with cars. You know, if you've got to want to buy a car and 18 months ago, the federal funds rate was 0.2% and now it's 5.3%. Car loan rates are up. It's harder for people to get loans. Car insurance rates are up. That makes it harder to get a car. I think my my ex-wife messaged me. I think our car insurance rates went up. You know, her and my daughter's car insurance rates were up like 20, 25%. I mean, there's a lot of things going on that are driving up prices, and that makes it hard for people to buy cars. Elon made a physics joke. Yes, Jim Whitehead, absolutely. Elon made a physics joke that 50% growth must end someday or it exceeds the mass of the observable universe. Media translation, growth will slow. They have not backed off. This is exactly, this is a really good point, Jim. Tesla has not backed off of the 20 million in 2030 goal. Now, they turn impossible. I'm wearing the turn impossible into late shirt, right? Elonbits.com for the merch. Um, are they really going to get to 20 million vehicles by 2030? I, I think there's some possibility that they will get there. If it's 2031, am I going to cry? If it's 2032, am I going to cry? No. We get a 10x in nine years instead of seven years. I'm not going to freak out about it. So uh, you know, there's a lot of growth. Oh, thank you, Mark Potochnik, for for sharing the the link. The link to this shirt is in the chat. Thank you, Mark. So yeah, we had all that. And then ah, oh, Kevin, uh, Tesla is leaderless. True leaders lead during times of hardship, not only when it's convenient. Elon is not leading playing Diablo. Or complaining about the Fed. Put some pants on. I've been a massive supporter, but you're losing your biggest fans, Elon. Um, no, you're not his biggest fan. This, this guy, this guy pumped FTX. This guy pumped a crypto scam that cost people billions of dollars. Okay, he got paid. He got paid. He got paid to pump a crypto scam. Uh, not that one. This one. He got paid to pump a crypto scam, billions of dollars. He got sued. He settled. Okay. And he's talking about leadership. Okay. Now I know Kevin. I've met Kevin. I like Kevin on a personal level. But Tesla is leaderless. Uh, it's the fastest growing car company. It's one of the fastest growing companies in the world. There's a lot. It's so easy to watch anything that happens with Tesla and identify something and make a negative out of it. And you miss all the positives. I'm going to get to the positives in a minute. Um, there were some really big positives. Um, okay, I'm going to digress for a second. There's a, there's a comment from Free Palestine in the chat, which is going to be a uh, hide user from this channel. Free Palestine says, hi, Zionist. I'm going, to, I'm going to briefly comment on this. You hear the word Zionist. The people who use the word don't know what it means. I am not a Zionist. A Zionist, as a Jew, would have moved to Israel. That's what Zionism is. Zionism is all Jews should move to Israel. And I have not moved to Israel, and I'm not going to move to Israel. So I'm not a Zionist. Just to be clear, I am Jewish, or I, I'm identified by people who hate Jews as being Jewish. I'm not religious. I was born to Jewish parents. If you think that's important, then you're a racist, but we can move on. So I just, I just want to hit that point. Like, if you think that Zionists are people who think the state of Israel is, should exist, then you don't know what Zionists are. So uh, I don't know why that popped into the chat, but I'll, 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 I'll engage with it. So um, Elon, it, this is an example of someone who on the surface, pretends to pay attention to what Tesla is doing, pretends to pay attention to what Elon is doing. Anyone who has followed the history of Elon Musk and Tesla and SpaceX knows that he's a video game player. And one of the ways he builds team uh, cohesion 
is he plays video games with members of the team. It's in the SpaceX, uh, what is it called? Liftoff. It's in the book Liftoff about the early days of SpaceX. Um, it, it, it's, it's very, anybody who follows him knows that, that that's something that he does, that he plays video games. I'm sorry that, that it bothers you that the guy actually finds a little bit of time to do something fun in life. I, I'm sorry that you struggle with that. Somehow the guy manages to build five or six companies at once and at the same time finds time to play video games. He's just better than you are. He's better than I am, okay? Complaining about the Fed, I complain about the Fed. The Fed deserves to be complained about. They're raising interest rates and that's, that hurts the economy. And they printed a shit ton of money during, you know, whenever, whenever there's a crisis, they print a ton of money and then all of a sudden there's inflation and they feel like they need to raise interest rates. Like, maybe stop messing around with the economy and everything will be okay. Um, I'm a Marxist now. I was a Marxist now. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I'm a Marxist. We, humanity should, I, I am. That's actually true. I'm a spacist. Humanity should move into space. We should become a multi-planet species. And, and, and then we're going to displace the native species and, and people are going to complain that we're colon. People have complained about humans colonizing Mars as if we're going to displace the, indig the, in, the, the indigenous population of Mars or the moon or, or whatever planet we're going to go to. We're going to, oh no, we're going to spread our colonizing ways to other planets and displace the indigenous life forms on Mars? I, I don't know. Um, yeah, so Tesla is not leaderless. He was there for the call. He was engaged with the team. They were laughing about Cybertruck, uh, the, the ch manufacturing challenge of Cybertruck. They were positive about the next generation vehicle. Drew Baglino gave an absolutely spectacular accounting of the 4680. The shareholder deck gave absolutely stunning positive news about Tesla Energy. And I mean, we're, I want to go through some of this. Like, so we're going to deal with uh, Barry Glack. Okay. Barry Glack says this is what Tesla needs to do to rebound. And Elon, um, as long as Elon Musk keeps harping on monthly payments being too high, that's not going to improve gross margins. So if interest rates stay high, somehow gross margins are going to improve. Um, so let's be clear, for Tesla to rebound the stock, long-term investors need confidence that growth will accelerate in the future. And I am confident that growth will accelerate in the future. Baglino described 4680 progress. I, I, like, this is why you know that Gary Black does not understand Tesla and why Meet Kevin does not understand Tesla. Drew Baglino said that 4680 production increased 40% quarter on quarter. Scrap was reduced 40% quarter on quarter. They're currently producing 4680s on line one. They're producing Cybercell on line two. They're converting line one to Cybercell. They're going to run Cybercell on four lines. And they're building out four more lines in Texas. That's a lot of growth. Okay. 40% growth quarter and quarter is already amazing. Okay. You're going to 8x that. You're, you're going to go with a 10% higher energy dense cell. Like, Gary doesn't know what the cyber cell is. He doesn't know what energy density is. He has no clue what any of this stuff is. But he will rant on and on as if he knows what he's talking about. And he has 360,000 some followers on, on X who are like, oh, Gary, he understands Wall Street. He talks to portfolio managers. Like, there's only three portfolio managers on Wall Street. And, like, everyone on Wall Street thinks the same. And Gary knows how they all think. And they're all... Like, we don't even know if he's, like, are these portfolio managers in his imagination? Has anyone ever come out and said, I'm one of the portfolio managers that Gary Blacks talks to, and he's, he nails it every time? He just makes stuff up. Who knows what, he probably believes what he's saying, because that's narcissism. But, you know, does Gary really under, you know, this is the test. If you didn't catch Drew Baglino's, like, Look at all the critics. None of the critics of what's going on with Tesla talked about the 4680 improvement. None of the critics talked about Tesla Energy's growth and Tesla Energy margins going to 24%. 24% gross margin on Tesla Energy. You're talking about a line of business that was a half a billion dollars in profit from Tesla Energy. Tesla Energy used to not be profitable. Now it's a half a billion dollars a quarter in profit. That's $2 billion a year in profit. And energy is growing 100 to 200% a year, and margins are rising. 
That's a really positive thing that they somehow missed. And Baglino reports like absolutely spectacular progress on 4680. And everybody's like freaking out. Giga Mexico, uh, you know, oh, they're stalling Giga Mexico. That wasn't new. That was in the biography. It was in the biography. And it wasn't they're not building Giga Mexico. It was that they're shifting initial production of the next generation vehicle to Texas because it's closer to the engineers. So it will happen faster and better. Moving the next generation vehicle's initial production to Texas is a positive, not a negative. I, I just, I, I literally, like, how do you not know this? Like, the biography came out, and I read it in two days, because I'm interested in what's going on with Tesla. I'm interested in what's going on with X, what's going on with SpaceX. I actually care about the substance of what happens with the company. With the company, with Elon, with, you know, all the technological development that's happening. I actually care about this stuff. I don't spend my time talking to portfolio managers on Wall Street or imagine or my imaginary friends who say they're portfolio managers on Wall Street. I actually read what's happening with the company. I listen to, you know, Drew Baglino talking. I read the shareholder deck, all of it. I don't just read the parts that are negative because they're look, it's very clear that vehicle gross margins are down and that vehicle sales. They were very, they were very clear in the shareholder deck, and they've been clear for a little while that production's going to be down. They're re, you know, rehabbing the factories. They're doing this and that, and it's not a shock that there's not a lot of room for growth in Model Y and Model Three and Model S and Model X aren't growing. That the future growth of the company is going to be a little bit from Cybertruck and a lot more from next generation vehicle on the vehicle side, and there's massive growth with energy. And they're constantly working on improving FSD. They're, they're doing the things that need to be done. Another one that they missed, they increased CapEx like to $2.4 billion for the quarter. That's a pace of like $10 billion a year. That's more than their past guidance on CapEx. That's investing in the business for growth, right? Are you investing in Tesla for short-term margins? Or are you investing in Tesla for long-term growth? What are they doing for long-term growth? They, they're increasing. I'm just going to pull this off the screen. They're increasing CapEx. That's growth. They're, they're increasing battery lines for 4680. They're increasing production of 4680. They're increasing their efforts on the next gen vehicle. They're making progress on Cybertruck. They announced Cybertruck deliveries. Yeah, it's late. They're turning impossible into late. There's a bunch of reasons why Cybertruck is late, but it's coming. Now, I want to be clear about this too. Cybertruck is not a critical element of Tesla's long-term future. It is, it is going to be important in the short run because number one, it'll increase vehicle production. It'll be, it's a huge branding exercise. You want advertising? Drive a Cybertruck in public and everyone's going to want to know what the hell is that? that? That's going to be way more important for branding than running some ad on the Super Bowl or some other nonsense advertising that these guys want that they don't understand. Ad they claim they understand advertising. They don't understand advertising. Yes, Edward Gilmartin. Imagine when second mega pack factory goes online in China. Yeah, so the Lathrop factory, the factory in California, is going to be up to 40 gigawatt hours a year. Right now, they're on a pace for 12 gigawatt hours a year. So there's like a two and a half X of growth in mega pack coming. And then they're going to build a factory in China, which I don't think they've started yet, but things move fast in China. So by the end of 2024, we're going to be on track to heading towards 80 gigawatt hours a year. Probably by the end of 2025, we'll be at 80 gigawatt hours a year. That's like a five or six X. I think that's a six X. That's a six X in energy. And margins are going up. And margins in Shanghai will be higher. The, the cost of producing mega packs in China is going to be way lower than the cost of producing mega packs in California. Because the labor costs are lower, the workers are more efficient, and the battery cells are there. The, 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 the lithium iron phosphate cells are produced in China. It's going to be huge. Why hasn't Elon purchased the iron mines down by Starbase? I don't think Tesla needs to own iron mines. That's not like something that would be a good, that's not something that's going to be a high margin business for Tesla. Like they let other people do the stuff that's easy and they do the stuff that's hard. Colin Kaiser asks, are Model Y and Model 3 too good for use as robo-taxi vehicles? How is it bad to reduce costs and prices of luxury vehicles to make them accessible to the peasants? 
Um, they're not too good for use as robo taxi vehicles. They're used as Ubers now. Um, I think that that they are more costly than the robo taxi will be. The the long term future of robo taxi will be vehicles that are less expensive to operate. If you just want to get from point A to point B, and you don't need to show off to your friends, here's my cool car, then a car that will get you don't care whether you're riding in a Prius or a or a Model Three. You're not going to pay an extra fifty bucks to ride in a Cadillac versus a, a Prius. If the Prius is going to get you there in the same amount of time and it's safe, you're not going to care. Very glad, yeah. So, um, you know, the the, the disc I wanted I wanted to mention that the discussion of the next gen vehicle, like, did people miss it? They were talking about Cybertruck being hard to manufacture, and that's an engineering challenge. If you understand Baglino, like I'm, you know, president of the Baglino fan club. I think Jordan Gisagi is co-president. Um, if you understand Baglino. It's not a physics problem, it's an engineering problem. And they will solve it just like they're solving 4680. So they're making progress on Cybertruck, but they specifically said that the next generation vehicle is gonna be easier to manufacture. Because it doesn't have all the complexity of Cybertruck. It's a utilitarian vehicle. It's you know basically an ordinary vehicle. They didn't have to reinvent a lot of wheels to get the next generation vehicle going. Really, really positive. Um, Jim Whitehead says the visiting prime minister of Israel publicly asked Elon if battery prices are declining. He said they are declining about six or seven percent a year now. The prime minister called him the Edison of our time. Um, so there was a report on X that I think because because of the weakness in the economy, there was a report on X that battery prices in China are declined have declined. Um, mainly because they were ramping up their factories to produce more batteries for the expected demand from electric vehicle manufacturers. And not only Tesla, but other EV manufacturers have not had as much demand for the batteries as the battery manufacturers expected. So they're overproducing. They're not losing money on the batteries, but they're not selling them as at high of a price. So Tesla's cost price cost of batteries is going to decline. Plus they get the the, the tax benefit from the Inflation Reduction Act. Peaceful says, what do I think of Arkimoto? I think Arkimoto's Near death? I don't know. I, 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 I visited them. I don't think they, they demonstrated the, the commitment that you need in a startup, that you have to work crazy hours and you have to do crazy things and you have to be focused on a product. I, I mean, I love the people and I think it's a, they had some great ideas, but you know, they didn't execute. It's about execution. Oh, thank you, Mark Matashing. Battery's down 33% this year. Yeah. I don't think that was a wrap. I think Elon said they actually fired like a Tommy gun at the car. I don't know what to believe. I don't know whether Elon's making, making jokes or not. So Barry Glack had this long, uh, this is actually like a, a, a thread from Barry Glack. Says, There's a lot of misinformation about there. What caused Tesla stock to drop 16% this week versus the NASDAQ, I guess, at 3% after earnings. Many mistakenly believe it was Elon's somber tone and warnings, tone, tone and warnings about the economy. It was not. Elon has been cautious about the economy for at least a year. Okay, good. And it, this is Gary's opinion of what caused the drop. Concerns that more, more price cuts are coming, which reduces auto gross margins, but won't materially impact Tesla volume estimates. Right. I mean, Tesla volume, I mean, they, they basically said they're going for 1.8 million this year. Even James Catt thinks they're going to hit 1.8 million this year, which I don't think they're going to reach a full 1.8 million. But if they do, they do. Um, they're going to have to deliver 476,000 vehicles in Q4 to get to 1.8 million. That would be a record quarter of deliveries. I'm not saying it's impossible. I just, I don't know that they're going to pull that off. Um, I'm, my guess would be more like 460,000 and they fall a little short of 1.8 million, but they're in the ballpark. But, you know, in reduced confidence about Tesla's long-term trajectory, long-term growth trajectory, how do you have reduced confidence about Tesla's long-term growth trajectory when energy is growing and increasing margins, when 4680 production is increased like, do, do you understand 40% increase quarter on quarter? Do you understand 40% reduction in scrap? That, that means they're making a lot, becoming a lot more efficient at making the batteries. 10% increase in energy density for Cybercell. Like, like, do you not see what this stuff is? So Gary's going to address each of these concerns. Future price cuts. For weeks, I've taken grief for focusing, focusing on Tesla's plunging gross margins. But no one can deny that investors are very concerned about further price cuts and volume. So, which investors? All investors don't think the same. This no one can deny that investors are some people who buy or sell Tesla stock are concerned about further price cuts. Hyundai cut prices, right? The economy sucks. 
people can't afford to buy cars. And if you want to sell cars, you got to do something. That's it. If you want to sell cars, you got to do something to sell cars. You can, you can reduce your production and then you'll sell fewer cars and maybe you can keep prices up or you can increase production and you're going to have to lower prices because demand is flagging because overall demand in the economy is down for, for products like this. That's what it is. Year-on-year -year cost of goods sold declines have significantly lagged year-on-year -year average uh, selling price declines. Yep. Um, while many argue Wall Street is too short-term oriented, and it's not, just to be clear, it's not like Wall Street is a, you know, I, I, I will occasionally invoke Wall Street. It's not like Univer Wall Street is like one guy who tells everybody on Wall Street, here's what we're doing, right? There's different people on Wall Street with different objectives and different approaches. But if you are focused on next quarter, then you're going to be focused on next quarter and you're not looking seven years down the road. So if you're a long-term investor, you're not worried about next quarter. You're not worried about next week. You're not worried about Q3 of 2024. You're worried about 2030. Um, let's be real. Volumes and auto gross margins are the two variables that most impact Tesla's long-term value and investors' models. Do all investors have the same models? Like, I have a model that isn't really that focused on auto gross margins. You know, my, my, the variables that impact Tesla long-term the most are delivering FSD, going to a robo-taxi network, and bot. Right? If you, if you solve FSD, you develop, you know, deliver robo-taxi, uh, a robo-taxi future, and you deliver a bot future, that has the most impact on Tesla's long-term value. If you don't see that, you don't understand the company. And in the medium to long-term, if you don't get FSD, then the expectation, the projection from Tesla is that vehicles will grow about 10x. Vehicle volumes will grow about 10x from now until 2030. From ballpark 2 million to ballpark 20 million in about seven years. Energy is going to grow about 50x from now until 2030. And energy margins are already higher than car margins. So where's the long-term growth story? The long-term growth story if you don't, it's FSD, RoboTaxi, and Bot. And after that, it's Tesla Energy, right? And even like a 10X in vehicle volumes is already big growth. So, and, and margins are down because of macro, because, you know, high interest rates and whatever macroeconomic problems. And the question is, is, mac, is, are the, is the macroeconomic situation going to improve at some point? Judging by economic history, we're in a dip now in the macro economy and the economy will come back. Uh, I have a, I'm, a, I'm not a Republican. I'm a registered Democrat. Actually, I'm more of a, I'm basically a libertarian. I don't believe in that much government anymore, but I'm still a libertarian, arguably. So I have a friend who's a partisan Democrat. And we both agree that it's likely that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates ahead of the 2024 election because the Federal Reserve has become political. And I don't think that's necessarily that new. So if they start cutting interest rates ahead of the election, then the economy is probably going to rebound and demand is going to go back up and they're going to sell more cars at higher prices. That's just what's going to happen. Now, it may take longer. At some point, some of us think that at some point the Federal Reserve will start cutting interest rates. When? I don't know. Probably before 2030. I don't know when, but probably before 2030. For those who say I'm too beholden to spreadsheets, this is back of the envelope math, earnings matter. Yeah, but, but long-term growth is not whether auto gross margin is 17% or 18% or 16% in, Q, in Q2 of 2024, right? Long-term growth is producing a hell of a lot more vehicles, producing a hell of a lot more energy storage, hopefully at some point ramping solar when interest rates come down and it's easier to sell solar, FSD, RoboTaxi, and BOT. That's the long-term growth story. If you think the long-term growth story is slight increases in vehicle production along with, you know, better margins, then you don't understand Tesla at all. Sorry, let me go to the chat for a second. I'll come back to this. Decreased cash flow largely due to increased investment in the dojo, etc. cetera. Uh, the cash pile grew. It's a record cash pile. They added $3 billion to the cash pile this quarter. I mean, there's another thing, like, the cash pile went to 26 billion. And another thing, the long-term growth story is CapEx. Tesla is in increasing their investment in CapEx, which is for long, and they specifically said it in the shareholder deck. We're increasing CapEx and R&D 
because we think this is a good time to, to focus on long-term growth. Like, you want a company that's interested in long-term growth, they literally said it in the shareholder deck that we're focusing on long-term growth. Um, would it be a good idea for Tesla to do a stock split? I don't care about stock splits. Uh, Edward Gilmartin says he'd build a Lathrop-sized mega pack factory in Mexico and India. Now the demand is there. Um, I don't know if the battery supply is there. Um, I don't know if India is a good place to do business yet. Um, I don't know that they need a mega pack factory in Mexico. I'm not sure. I'm sure that Tesla has a plan for building more mega pack factories. I think the deal is they're getting they're they're ramping Lathrop and they're learning a lot about how to manufacture mega packs in Lathrop. In California and they're going to build a mega pack factory in Shanghai and they're going to learn more from building the next factory in Shanghai and I think at a certain point when they get comfortable with how they're building mega packs and they feel like they've hit like a level of efficiency and ability to scale volumes then they'll build two or three or four mega pack factories at the same time and they may already be planning it um, do I believe that Tesla will go private in the near future no Tesla's not going private um, I need my Cybertruck soon before World War Three. Yeah, exactly. I bought my Model 3 at long range 1.5 years ago. Can buy the same now for 10,000 pounds less and couldn't care less. Everyone should be able to have this experience. Um, look, the prices of other cars are falling too. The, the, the idea that it may not be like a sticker price, right? But other car companies are reducing prices or they're cutting volumes. They're cutting values to maintain margins, and then they're they're losing market share. This is a classic Silicon Valley strategy: is to maximize market share. I'm I was actually if I was look if I had one thing in particular that I was disappointed in, it was the idea that Tesla's not going to push higher growth rates into this economic hard times. I think that's probably it's it's a it's probably the wrong strategy, but more important, it's not. It doesn't feel like Elon to me. To me, Elon is like. You know, let's 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 jump and grab as much market share as possible. And if we have to go down to zero margin, we'll go down to zero margin. And I think there are voices within the company that don't want to go down to zero margin. And uh, and also, I think um, Model Y and Model Three may have may be approaching a saturation point where there's just not that many more people who want to buy them. Uh, it's you know, it's a hard cold, cold hard reality that you know, and the idea that you're going to advertise. And and people are going to go wake up and go, oh, my God, I guess I want an electric vehicle because I saw an ad on the Super Bowl. It's a lot harder than you think. Um, you know, the, the way the Tesla has grown is, you know, you notice a bunch of your <clears throat> you notice a bunch of your neighbors bought a, a, a Tesla and you might ask one of your neighbors questions about it. And all of a sudden, oh, that sounds pretty good. Am I sticking to my guns on a three hundred and forty thousand dollars a share pre splits? I'm sticking to my guns on a ten trillion dollar market cap. I don't think about it in terms of share price typically because the splits make it confusing. I, I think we're easily going to a $10 trillion market cap. $8 trillion in the bear case by 2030, 2031, 2032. And the potential for a 20, 30, 40, 50 trillion dollar market cap is there. <clears throat> I mean, you with bot, the potential for the market cap is you know 100 billion or more. Did I see the crowd around Elon and Cybertruck at F1 race in Austin? When it hits roads and scale, it's going to be a lot of people with neck pain. Yeah. Shortage of giant forklifts to move mega packs around at Lathrop. I think they're okay there. What's twenty six billion dollars? Yeah, they're going to have a high high interest income at five percent on twenty six billion dollars. That's true. I think that's more than a billion a year, isn't it? Um, Gary Phillips drove his first Tesla today. Test drive from showroom. Awesome car. Showroom was actually packed. Was absolutely packed today. The man looks. It's hard to tell like where, how demand is on a given moment. Uh, Jim Whitehead says, I've seen many auto industry articles that with high interest rates, there'll be a horrible, horrible slaughter of loan repos next year with a few buyers getting bargains. Yeah, there's a, an account on X called uh, Car Dealership Guy. He's been talking about all kinds of problems in the, in the car market. With legacy auto, you lose 20% just driving off the dealership lot. I mean, people are like, I, I've sort of sold my Model X. I have a guy who's taken over the loan. But the effective resale price of my Model X was about 30% off what I paid for it. But that's after over a year and 44,000 miles. It's typical for a car to lose 20 to 30% of its value when you drive it off the lot. I don't understand what people are freaking out about. This is normal. Okay, so uh, what bugged me most about the earnings call, this is Barry Glack again. 
was the transfer of blame for Tesla's falling earnings to high monthly interest payments, which I and others have shown are 15 to 20% lower today than they were 12 to 15 months ago. I don't find Gary credible on this. Just to be blunt, I don't find Gary credible on this. Just, and, and again, if you're increasing volume from 300,000 cars a quarter to 450,000 cars a quarter, then when supply goes up, prices go down. Supply and demand. I, I don't know how Barry Glack doesn't understand supply and demand. That's basic economics. Um, yeah, so he's just, you know, everything's Elon's fault. Just, just remember, whatever goes wrong, it's Elon's fault. If, if Israel and, and Palestine, the Palestinians are having a conflict in Gaza, it must be Elon's fault. Gary says, loss in conviction about future growth. Where management failed most on the call was not by highlighting the many future growth drivers that we Tesla investors tend to get excited about. Cybertruck, Model 3 Highland, FSD4, Level 4 Autonomy, $25,000 next-gen vehicle and accelerating vehicle EV adoption. Okay, so first of all, Cybertruck is somewhat significant for short-term growth, but their projection was 250,000 units a year. Tesla is already selling in the ballpark of 2 million units a year, 2 million units a year, so 250,000 is not that much growth, and that's in 2025, right? When they're, they'll hopefully be selling 2.5 million vehicles, so it'll be like you know 10% of volume at best. Maybe 3 million vehicles will be less than 10% of volume. But in 2030, we're hoping to sell 20 million or produce 20 million vehicles. Well, how much is 250,000 out of 20 million? Cybertruck is not the main future of Tesla. The next generation vehicle is the main future. And, and Model 3 Highland, there's a limited amount of, of market for Model 3. It's not going to sell more than Model Y. The sedans are not as popular as SUVs. They, they, and they improved Model 3 Highland. And by the way, Tesla does not call it Highland. Tesla calls it the new Model 3. I talked to a Tesla employee. They just call it the new Model 3. There's no internal emails calling it Highland, right? I think there may be a Highland coming. I think there may be a total refresh, uh, a total redesign of Model 3 and Model Y coming. But um, whether you call it Highland or not, Model 3 is not the future of the company. The future of the company is the next generation vehicle, and yes, FSD. Not level four autonomy, robo taxi. Um, the next generation vehicle. I'm going to stand by this. It's a twenty thousand dollar vehicle. It's not a twenty five thousand dollar vehicle. Twenty five thousand dollar vehicle would not be a game changer. Model three is already, you know, prices approaching like thirty five thousand dollars. That twenty five thousand dollars is not that much better. I think they're going for twenty thousand. Drew Baglino said half the cost of Model three Model Y platform. You can buy a Model three for under forty thousand. You should be able to buy a next-gen vehicle for under 20000 Are they going to achieve it? Maybe, maybe not. My bet would be, in, I think in Shanghai, the, the low price of the Model 3 is around 30, under $35,000. So you could be looking at a $17,000 vehicle in China. And that actually might sell in India. I don't think it would sell enough in India. That might sell in India. But in terms of vehicles, next-gen vehicle is, is the growth story. The other stuff is relatively minor. And FSD, it's not level four autonomy. It's level five robo taxi. That's the growth story. And they do talk about it. He talked about adding a, a cluster of H100 chips to improve training. He's talked about that before. And Tesla, you know, that's not really new. The Tesla AI team posted about, you know, how much they're increasing compute and they're generating more data. There's all kinds of good news about that. I don't think there was really a question for them to answer about autonomy. So how would they talk about it if there was no question about it? Um, um, so while some say Elon couldn't talk about Model 3 Highlands since it would Osborne old Model 3 volumes, let's be real. There's no old Model 3. I, I never said he can't talk about Model 3, the, the current, the new Model 3 because of Osborne. I don't, I think the Osborne effect is fake. It, it, it's real in some circumstances. It's not real for Tesla. And since when does a corporate earnings call drive consumer behavior? Then why are you saying that his call, his 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 talk on the call was a problem for consumer was, was driving down demand? The other complaint I get is why does Tesla have to be the one to advertise to ICE users the benefits of going EV? Okay, so this is this is we're going to dive into Barry Glack's fantasy that he understands advertising. Those who've worked or studied marketing know that advertising is a long-term investment, much like R and D. There's rarely any short-term benefit gained by investing in one's brand equity. Tesla has the strongest brand of any car maker. And Cybertruck is going to build the brand. They're building the brand 
this this is classic Barry Glack not understanding Tesla. You don't build the brand by shilling your product on mainstream media. You build your brand by building great products that people want. And they tell their neighbors and they tell their friends about it. You get word of mouth advertising through word of mouth and word of mouth education. That's how you grow the brand by making really, really cool products. Cybertruck is going to be a really, really cool product. And that's going to build the brand. Running an ad on a golf, on a golf tournament is going to build the brand a little. But this idea that Tesla, needs, and here's the thing. He's like, are, are you talking about educational advertising? Are you talking about investing in brand equity? Those are two different things. Advertising for branding is not the same as educational advertising. Pricing, on the other hand, is widely viewed as a short-term promotional narcotic to pull volume forward. They haven't advertised lower prices. They're just lowering prices so they can sell the cars. They're trying to clear the volume. I'm not trying to pull volume forward. They're just trying to sell the cars that they make. They're, they're pricing it whatever they need to price it to get the cars sold. Those who prefer further price cuts to even modest advertising are guilty of short-term thinking. No, you have to. So here's, here's Gary. Years ago, I was a brand manager on Tylenol. The biggest debates we had as a product team were about investing in advertising to compete with Advil. So Tylenol is a high margin product. Okay, They're not making 20% margins on Tylenol. Right? They're making much higher margins on Tylenol than... I, I actually don't know what, what Tylenol's margins are. But uh, name brand drugs typically are high margin. Tesla's vehicles are selling at about a 20% margin. You need a return on ad spend of more than 5 to 1 to justify the, the generating value above a 20% margin. So the short answer is brands need to balance both long-term brand equity building and short-term pricing pressures to maximize value. Apple discovered long ago that educating non-users about the benefits of switching to iPhones outweighed the benefits of... Okay, so Apple, again, very high margin product. Okay, Apple gets software margins, right? They sell their iPhones for a lot more than it costs them to build them. They're, they're not 20% margins at Apple. Somebody can help me out on that. I, I'm pretty sure that margins at Apple are... so. Um, Apple launched a cheaper SE model at 50% of the price of its flagship phone. It's why we have long championed a $25,000 Tesla EV. What do you mean you've long championed? A, like, like, like Tesla wasn't planning to make the low cost vehicle? Like it, Tesla wasn't going to build the next generation vehicle unless, unless Gary championed it. What do you mean you've championed it? Championed? They've been talking about building the low, the, they, battery day they talked about this vehicle. Gary was there for battery day. Was he talking about the next generation vehicle after battery day? I don't think so. I don't think Gary understands what the next generation vehicle is. I don't think he understands unboxed process. He doesn't understand 48 volt low, uh, system, uh, power, uh, low voltage architecture, 800 volt. I think they said that the next gen vehicle might not use the 800 volt powertrain, by the way, which I thought was interesting. I, I think that the call was a little bit cut off there. I don't know if anybody heard that. Um, Colin Kaiser says, can next gen commence production before co-located battery production is scaled up way too uh, to match? No, they don't. They can get batteries from China with the next gen vehicle. I, the point is just that they want to get production of the next gen vehicle right. They, they want to get it right so that they can manufacture it in high volume and efficiently. And, and they're trying some new techniques to get the cost down. You want to get as much cost as you can out of it. Um. There is no hint of a timeline. So Itan Dagan says they absolutely asked about FSD and the answer provided no hint of a timeline because you can't have a timeline. You can't predict when you're going to crack the nut. Elon talked about stacked log curves. Like it's you're, you're making progress towards a goal and you think you're there and then your, your, your improvement levels off and you've got to come up with new ways of innovating. That's what's happening with AI everywhere. Is 68 trillion market cap a reasonable exit target? Uh, you can make your own exit target. Uh, that, that, that's, I, I, I'm not exiting. I'm only exiting when I think the value is going to stop going up. Um, Cybertrucker says, I truly hope Tesla does not cave to the influencer and Wall Street blowhards. They're not caving. They're, they keep doing what they're doing. Why am I so talking so slow now? Yeah, no kidding. Advertising money is ransom to legacy media. Absolutely. 
Jim says, I read a book on brands and it was pointed out that when there's new tech in the old field, it allows a new firm to become first in the new category. It's how Apple buried Nokia and cell phones. Yeah. And, and Tesla is the clear market leader in EVs. It's not even a question. Nobody can build a low cost, high volume EV until process and battery production volume is increased. I think that, um, I think CATL is making enough lithium iron phosphate batteries that Tesla could start producing the next generation vehicles soon if it was ready. I think they want to get the engineering of the vehicle right. It's about getting manufacturing down. It's about nailing the manufacturing. I think they know what the cars are going to be because there's a robo taxi model and there's a model with steering wheel. I think they know what the cars are going to be. They just got to get the manufacturing down. And, you know, getting manufacturing right is a challenge. Prototypes are easy. Manufacturing is hard. How much impact on cost will lithium and cathode plants have? They will, it's, it's both reducing cost and it's improving quality. Like the, the, the improvements in the 4680 cell are going to depend on better quality cathode and better quality refined lithium. As I understand it, I, mean, I think that's some of the things that they've said. Hmm. What are the chances they announce a Tesla van? Well, it's very clear that there will be a Tesla van probably on the Cybertruck platform, probably in a year or two. Maybe quicker. I mean, that, that could be a surprise thing. In our mind, the three most important value drivers are driving affordability through a cheaper 25K to 30K Tesla next gen. This is just Gary not seeing the future. 25 to 30K isn't it. 20K. 20K or less. That's a big game changer. Tesla entering the pickup truck segment with Cybertruck, 20% share. If they're going to make 250,000, that's not a 20% share. I think it's about 3 million pickups a year. So... You'd have to do 750000 to get a 20% share. So they're not close to a 20% share anytime soon. Um, or maybe he means pickups are 20% of the overall market. I don't know. I, I do agree that Cybertruck will produce a halo effect for the entire franchise. Well, then you're agreeing that Cybertruck is going to build brand equity. And then why are we wasting our time with advertising? An education campaign targeting ICE users to accelerate EV adoption. So when you talk, this is this is really critical. This is This is a classic thing. Is it... Branding or is it education? And give me an example of an ad campaign where somebody did an educational ad campaign that was successful. What are you educating the consumers about? Are you educating them about one pedal driving? Are you educating them about the lower price? Are you educating them about the lower cost of ownership? Are you educating them about the, the software in the car? Are you educating them about self-driving? There's like 10 things you could educate people about Teslas. Easily 10 things you could educate them about. Which features are you going to focus on in your educational advertising? Every additional feature you're going to include in your ad campaign increases the cost of the ad campaign. Who's the audience you're going to target with your ad campaign? Are you going to target Mercedes, BMW, and Audi customers, which is low volume? Are you going to target Corolla and RAV4 owners, which is high volume? Who, how, do you, how do you identify which audience to target? Are you targeting men? Are you targeting women? What age range are you targeting? What platforms are you using to target them? It's all blah, blah, blah. When you get down to the, how are you going to make this actually work? It's got no answers. What, what are you going to use social media? Do you expect Tesla to advertise on Meta on Facebook and Instagram? Elon's not going to advertise on Facebook and Instagram. Tesla doesn't even have accounts on Tesla and Instagram, on Instagram and, and Facebook, right? Are, if they advertise on X, is that okay? Is that efficient? Is that effective? Or are you going to complain? You know that the minute Tesla does any kind of significant advertising, Gary's going to say, that's not how I want you to do it. Because Gary, the smarter than Elon disease is a plague on humanity. Um, so, oh, I, sorry, I had one piece of news that I thought was significant. This is from Sawyer Merritt um, with details about Cybertruck. And Cybertruck will be classed as Class G and Class H. Now, a Class G Cybertruck would have a gross vehicle weight rating of under 9,000 pounds. And... We were told that Cybertruck would have a payload capacity of 3,500 pounds. So 9,000 minus 3,500 is 5,500. So at least one Cybertruck will be under 5,500 pounds, if this is correct. That's either it doesn't have a 3,500 pound payload, or you know this isn't accurate and it's not going to be you know Class G. But if it's a Class G pickup. Um, and it's it, it's gross vehicle weight rating is less than 9,000 pounds. That means it, with a 3,500 payload, 3,500 pound payload, the Cybertruck will weigh under 5,500 pounds. That's a detail I think everyone else missed. All right, let me look in the chat. I got 10 minutes to go before I'm going to do another live stream. I don't even plan. I'm going to do another live stream on uh, 
on locals warrenredlink.locals.com after we're done here maybe i'll just i think i'm just going to keep going here we'll see how it goes here um sop of the 25k car is going to be late 2024 i don't know what sop means neither education or brand development ads can help if the numbers of new cars are not available at the target price tesla wants to sell at yeah if they know what cars going to be they mostly know what the manufacturing is going to be for some for the developing them in tandem yeah they're developing they, they have a really good idea what the car is going to be but they're constantly changing how they manufacture the car and what the car actually has in it because they're trying to optimize they want to make it optimal ebet says i would love to see a good tease of the next gen platform yeah but they're, they're not doing this to generate interest in the stock I agree it's unfortunate that Barry Glatt got so much attention in the Tesla community. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand what people see in him. Uh, he, he sounds good. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about. I don't know. I don't get it. Statista writes, in 2021, some 3.3 million vehicles, about 11.6 million light trucks, and 451,000 heavy-duty trucks were sold to customers in the United States. Wow. Yeah, so you'd have to do 700. I don't know what he, what he meant by market share, the 20% share. Tesla to design an electric K car, and I don't mean the K model itself, but the Model K was the top-selling car during its time. Yeah, I don't think so. What price point do you think Cybertruck one motor will be? I don't. I don't think there will be a single motor Cybertruck. Who's there? No, all advertising is not education. A lot of advertising is ba da ba ba ba. You know, I'm loving it. You know, that's not educational. What's my guess for number of Cybertrucks delivered on November 30th? Uh, I would say less than 50, and I think there'll be some non-employees who get them, but I don't know. This week, the share price is about $212. Do you think the share price will be pretty consistent for the next two weeks to a month? No, I don't think the share price will be consistent. I think the share price will fluctuate wildly. That's what the Tesla stock has always done. I can't tell you whether it's going to go up or down. I can tell you it's going to fluctuate. Electric Viking reported yesterday was 3,500 pound payload. They told us it was 3,500 pound, pound payload at the initial reveal. Have they actually tried their out of the box manufacturing? It's it's uh, not out of the box. What's the term for it? A unboxed process. Of course they haven't. Of course they haven't done it at scale. They have a lot to learn. How much do you think they're sandbagging the 250,000 cyber trucks per year since it would take eight years just to fill the back orders? Yeah. Um, I think that they're going to produce the cyber trucks and see how they sell. And if they sell really well, then, you know, people actually follow through on the orders and they'll produce more. Um, does Barry Glatt go crazy when Legacy Auto offers manufacturer incentives? He's not paying attention to that. He, look, he, he, I think Barry Glatt and all the, the doomsayers, they have their shtick. This is, this is my take on what's going on with Tesla. And I'm right, and they're wrong, and blah, 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 blah. But by the way, I, I think I'm just going to keep ranting here. I don't think I'm going to do a live stream on Locals today because I'm I'm smoking. I'm smoking. Someone needs to ask GM Mary Barra what she's smoking when she makes predictions. Is it legal? Oh, standard operating procedure. Thank you. A lot of advertising makes the advertising agency's wallet happy and nobody else. Yeah, this thing about advertising. Like, anybody who tells you Tesla should advertise, it's a really simple question. Oh, really? How do you want them to advertise? What? What, what kind of ads? Are they running 30-second TV ads? Are they running 15-second TV ads? What, type of, what types of TV shows should they advertise on? Which channels should they advertise on? Should they advertise on CNBC? Should they, like the CNBC uh, viewers aren't aware of Tesla. Like, they don't, they, like, like the people who watch golf don't watch CNBC and aren't aware of Tesla the company. Like, who's the audience that you're targeting with your ads? Are you targeting people who watch the Today Show? Are you targeting women? Are you targeting men? Are you targeting young people? Are you targeting old people? Who are you targeting with these ads? What ad is going to resonate with the, with the viewers? Like I, if I was going to do a thirty second ad, I would say "fun, safe, love." Like what? What's the phrase? What are you? What phrase are you going to give them? I'm loving it. I'm with her. Make America great again. What? What's your catchphrase that you want people to take away from the ad? I think "fun, safe, love" is a great catchphrase. Is that the one they should use? I don't know. Um, Tesla should use advertising to combat the negative message in the media on FSD, which is their most significant selling feature. I don't think FSD is their most significant selling feature today. I think the most significant selling feature today is the cars are just cool. They're fun. They're cool. They're great. They're low cost. There's lots of advantages to Tesla. Most people don't use FSD. Most cars don't have FSD, so that's not their biggest selling point. 
Will Jay Leno get one of the first Cybertrucks? There's a good chance he would, yeah. Why won't Tesla use V2L? I don't even know what V2L is. It sounds like Cybertruck is very difficult to build. Maybe a bad decision. Uh, I don't think it's... I think it's difficult to build, but everything Tesla does is difficult. This is what they do. They take on difficult challenges. This is what SpaceX does. They take on difficult challenges. If you want to invest in a company that doesn't do difficult things, then don't invest in Elon's companies. That's what they do. They're trying to build a freaking... Neuralink is trying to build a freaking brain implant to cure brain diseases. Do you think that's easy? They do stuff that's hard. Oh, my friend Carl asks a negative spin on... Let me pull that up. I got a, a DM from a friend. A negative spin on the H100 cluster. What's wrong with Dojo? Answer, it's not either or, it's both. An H1 cluster is faster a bridge, like using battery suppliers and eventually making their own batteries. So the answer to um, why Dojo, when you have the H100s and the A100s is, Elon has said that NVIDIA cannot supply Tesla with enough chips. Tesla would buy more chips. There's, there's a bunch of answers, right? But Tesla loves the NVIDIA chips. And they would buy more if they if Nvidia had the supply. Nvidia does not make enough chips to satisfy Tesla's demand for chips. Um, I think that Dojo will actually be faster and more effective and more cost effective than Nvidia chips in the long run. And that's an investment. That's an R and D uh, capex investment in being able to deliver a much because like right now they had sorry before the H one one hundred cluster they had about they had fifteen thousand A one hundreds. I think the H100 cluster effectively doubles their computing power, but they're trying to 20x their computing power, right? So Dojo is going to radically increase their ability to do computing of the specific needs they have of processing, the processing video streams for uh, learning. Vehicle to load. I don't know what vehicle to load means. I've never heard of vehicle to load before, Gook. Um, yeah, Jay Leno's video driving the semi was incredible free advertising for Tesla. Over a million saw it in the first week. And many were truck drivers that barely knew about Tesla. Absolutely. When will 2024 Model Y refresh release? I, I don't I don't know if they're refreshing Model Y. Model Y is only three years old and it's the best-selling vehicle in the world. Why do people think it needs a refresh? Model 3 was flagging, so they decided to refresh it. And, and the Model 3 refresh, to be clear, was a China-engineered refresh. It's entirely possible they're not going to refresh in North America. I think they will refresh in North America. But it's entirely, you know, this was designed to attract Chinese customers and European customers. Mary Barr is making plans to have an event where they make plans to develop plans for an exciting new model to be developed in the future. Exactly. Uh, well, Leno did a Cybertruck as well. Yes, Leno did a Cybertruck video as well. He'll probably do another one. Question from a marketing perspective. Should the Model 2 and the car deemed for a robo-taxi be the same car? So it's not Model 2. They've always told us it's not Model 2. Um, it's not the same vehicle. They've told us it's a different vehicle. d -Bat says, my TV has over 1,200 channels. How would you drill down to the correct ones to advertise on? The answer to that from the people who are full of it is, well, we just hire an ad agency and they figure it out. Like, like Tesla, like that's the way Tesla works. They just outsource major decisions to others. No, if Tesla's going to advertise, Tesla's going to figure out how to advertise and they're going to do it in-house probably. Uh, FSD will come in handy for those with mobility issues. Yeah, FSD will be great in the future. It's not there yet. Cyber truck plus load of power wall and solar roof in the back. Your truck, your fuel, one purchase. Any questions? I don't hate that, but I don't think it's going to work. I don't hate that, Colin. I don't hate it. Make a video. Make a video. What's my number one recommendation when selling a used EV? I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on selling used EVs. I tried to sell my Model X Plaid, and that was hell. So I did get it done, but it was, it was hard. I don't, I don't think I'm good at that. NVIDIA are likely putting the bulk of their effort into gaming graphics cards. So the, the issue with NVIDIA's graphics cards is that they are for many purposes, where Dojo is for one purpose. There will be a new generation of Dojo coming that will be for larger purposes, but Dojo is specifically engineered for the task needed for FSD um, and for bot. Um, NVIDIA chips are very good at that task, but they're, they're multi-purpose uh, equipment, so they're they're... They're not necessarily as well engineered for te what Tesla needs. They should invent some sort of hard and difficult non-traditional advertising. Yeah, like putting Cybertrucks on the road and semis on the road. So people see them and go, what the hell is that? 
The Pepsi semi-contract, great advertising. Dojo chips are designed by Tesla for Tesla. NVIDIA is a general trip. Great, but general. Uh, yes, exactly. So my friend Carl says, Tesla vehicles are priced like fruit in season. You produce what you produce, and price is essentially the intersection of the supply and demand curves. Although, based on the Q3 call, that is being modified slightly, or it could be Elon making a story that he can point to when the 1.8 million production number is not achieved. I don't know. I don't know, Carl. Um, Jim Perwell says, Warren, you definitely try to gain knowledge, which is great. Gary Black does not. He still keeps harping on advertising and price cuts. Look, if I want to say this again. I'm gonna, I want to emphasize this. When you see the, the talking heads criticizing Tesla, and they don't talk about Tesla energy, and they don't talk about Tesla energy is growing 100 to 200% a year, doubling or tripling every year with growing margins. If you don't see a growth story in that, what are you seeing? If you don't understand massive increases in 4680 cell production, if you don't understand the, the, lowering, the lowering cost of batteries in China, if you don't see that at some point they're likely to succeed, if you watch the, the, the AlphaGo documentary, there was a documentary on how Google DeepMind ended up developing a computer that beat the best players in the world at Go, the game Go. This is the way AI develops. It's not there, it's not there, it's never gonna get there, it's never gonna get there, holy crap, it's there. That's how it works. Vehicle to load is a store, using stored energy to power external devices such as electrical camping equipment, power tools, and a variety of consumer devices. I'm pretty confident that Cybertruck is going to have vehicle to load, if that's what that is. Oh, thank you, Team JG, for your support. Much appreciated. Uh, Raptor Cybertruck, I, you know, what's gonna be, you know, there's another little detail there. There's apparently going to be a Plaid Model 3. I predicted this. I predicted there would be a Plaid Model 3. Um, so apparently there's going to be, I think it's a dual motor Plaid Model 3. So it's going to be a dual motor, not tri-motor. So, you know, watch for a Model 3 doing under 3 seconds, 0 to 60. Maybe 2.5 seconds, 0 to 60. That's going to be off, off the charts. Um, yeah, will they do that with the Model Y? That would be off the charts. That would be like a Model, a model Y Plaid. I didn't even think about a Model Y Plaid. I don't think they're going to do that, but... Oh, that would be hot. Who bought the $150 four pack? I don't know what that is. 20 years, ago, 20 years ago, I suggested NVIDIA make chips for AI. People in the AI field laughed off that suggestion. Yeah, I mean, well, they caught up. Did I order the Starship Torch? No. Uh, I soldered in a clean room for Nortel before Y2K. <laughs> um... Any word on Starlink IPO? There's no word on Starlink IPO. I mean, the, the only news about Starlink is good news that they're growing. Um, they continue to launch. I, unfortunately, the launch of Starship seems to be delayed by federal regulations, which is a pain in the ass. Uh, you know, the FAA and the Fish and Wildlife Service evaluating the situation. Um, that's frustrating because the, the full next generation Starlink satellites are going to need Starship for launch to be able to get them into space because Falcon 9 can't lift them. So I, I think once you start seeing higher volumes of Starlink customers and higher volumes of Starlink satellites, at some point it's clearly profitable and they will IPO it. Um, and I think it'll IPO at $100 billion. Um, and it'll be a bargain at $100 billion and, and I will buy at $100 billion. If you make the Model 3 a cab, it would look like the Roadster 2. Uh, I don't think so. Um, sodium tech batteries, maybe I, I'm not convinced about that. So a really quick pump for, uh, my book, my new novel, it's, uh, Shelby hits the fan. It's on Amazon paperback is four ninety nine. The Kindle version is two ninety nine. dollars I'm hearing a lot of good things from people who are reading it. It is a short read. Um, it is like a two hour read. It's, I think it was like number 10 on Amazon's, uh, two hour reads list. One of the Amazon two hour reads list for like, I don't know apocalyptic fiction or science fiction or something like that. Um, Ford needs to cozy up to Tesla and start integrating Tesla, Tesla something into their vehicles. Otherwise, it's going to need to bail out like Government Motors GM. Tesla what's into their vehicles? I don't get that. The problem with being a bit of a tech prophet is that people laugh at your ideas. Decades later, they line up to buy them. Ask Elon. Oh, so you go back to before the iPhone, and I had a handspring Treo, which is probably the original smartphone. Before it was a palm tray, it was a handspring trail. And people laughed at me. They're like, oh, there's Warren with his thing. I'm like, okay. 
and now they're all walking around with iPhones. Um, I, I, I re- that's one of my, my misses as an investor is I, when the iPhone came out, I didn't buy Apple stock. I mean, that, that would have been like the smart thing to do. So we, I think when you see revolutionary change happening and you're an early adopter and you get it, you have to do your due diligence. You have to look and say, okay, is there a competition on the horizon? Are they really innovative? Is there further innovation coming? Is this going to be a game changer? And if you see it, and I didn't see it with iPhone. I saw it with Amazon and I didn't invest enough. And I see it with Tesla now. When you see revolutionary change, buy it. If you, if you, you have to do your research, but if you see what you think is revolutionary change, then you got to act on that. And that's when you buy the stock. And I don't think people really get that. Now, that's how you buy growth stocks. Um, I'm going to get back to the chat in a second. I just want to mention, so I'm still in Japan. Uh, I'm studying my Japanese. I, this, I'm not recommending you buy this book, but I've got a kanji book. I've got an app on my phone for uh, practicing Chinese characters. That's Japanese is a combination of phonetic characters. Written Japanese is a combination of phonetic characters and Chinese characters. Uh, I've been going to events, meeting people. I have had a few dates with Japanese women. Uh, we'll see. I think my dating, I'm doing better dating in Japan than I was doing in America. I'm not still doing, I wouldn't say I'm doing spectacular, but I'm doing better. Um, I'm waiting on a visa from the, for, for approval from Aichi Prefecture, which is the, the place where I am. It's basically Nagoya, the city of Nagoya, Japan, and the, the surrounding prefecture is like a county or state is called Aichi Prefecture. I'm waiting for approval for a visa. I may or may not get it. At this point, it looks like I won't get it in time for when I have to leave Japan. So I'm planning a trip and I've already booked a hotel and gotten a visa to go to India. I'm going to go to this to uh, a, a comfortable place in India, one of the most comfortable spots in India. It's called the state of Goa. Um, I'm going to stay there for a couple of weeks and explore whether I'm going to try to do what I'm doing in India instead of Japan. I'm hearing from a lot of people I won't like India. We'll see. Um, I may try Thailand. I may try Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Vietnam. There's a bunch of other countries to try. Ideally, I'll come back to Japan. Um, We'll see. Um, I do like being in a place where people speak English a little bit more, but, you know, my Japanese is getting better. On date, did you speak more Japanese or English? Both the women that I dated recently spoke English reasonably well, so we mostly spoke in English. just tell them you are rich, you'll get all the women. Uh, I don't think it works that way. I wish it did. I guess, I, I guess at this point in my life, I wish that was true. It's not true. Um, and you don't necessarily want the women who want you because you're rich. You want women who want you because they like you. Have I written 2,000 Chinese characters yet? No, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I can read about 500 Chinese characters. Will you be able to attend the Japanese Mobility Conference? I don't think I'm attending the Japanese Mobility Conference. I didn't get an invite to that. I'm going to a Japan Society of Automotive Engineers event in Tokyo like a week later. I don't have a particular reason to go to the Japanese Mobility Conference. I haven't heard why. I've heard a bunch of people talking about that conference. I haven't heard why I should go. Uh, Tesla and Kama are the only ones on the right track for FSD. I think Kama is short on data and compute but they're roughly on the right track. And I don't want to say there aren't others who are on the right track. I don't know enough about who else is out there, but I don't see anybody else out there who's on the same track. Jim says, watching the, the YouTube channel Star Trek continues, it's fan-made Star Trek. Episode one is awesome, won many awards. Hmm. I'll look for that. Sushi Japanese. Yeah, the diversity of food in Japan. The, the Japanese cuisine is much more diverse than you might think by going to a Japanese restaurant. There's so much more available here. And, and the Chinese, it's a way, Chinese restaurants are very common. It's called Chu Kadyoti. But their Chinese restaurants are completely different from American Chinese restaurants. And from what I understand, they're not necessarily identical to Chinese restaurants in China. I may have to go to China just to see. Did I ever consider Eastern Europe for dating? I thought about it, but you know, I don't speak the Eastern European languages. And uh, if I go to India, I may visit... Because India is closer to Eastern Europe, I have been thinking about making a trip to India, uh, to uh, Eastern Europe. What was it? Croatia. I think I was talking to somebody in Split, Croatia, about going there. Tesla has so many huge revolutionary technologies. Get yourself a Filipina. I might go to the Philippines. I might try it. Um, A rich man asked his girlfriend if he lost all his money. Would she still love him? She said, yes, and I would miss you too. (laughs) That's a good one, Jim. Yeah, I, you know. I don't think you, you have to be careful not to date someone who wants you because you have money. 
if if they appreciate that you're not broke as opposed to they want you because you're rich you know they don't want to date broke men and i'm not broke but i'm not like i'm not like buy a jet rich i'm not like buy a yacht rich i probably could buy a yacht it just wouldn't be a smart move i couldn't buy a jet i suppose i could finance a jet but that would be really dumb go and try malaysia india doesn't want doesn't welcome foreign business or investments hard to crack their business environment um well, what I want to do in the short run is really just build prototypes. And I don't think India will be bad for that. I think India might actually be very good for that. And that's not really a business because I'm not selling anything. I'm just trying to build a toy, basically. And I don't think that's really a business. So we'll see. Um, I see a lot of English in Japan. There, there's, there's a lot of English signs in Japan, but Japanese people generally do not speak English well. Um, You could buy a Cessna. I probably could buy. I mean, I could buy a plane, but I just I don't I don't have a particular need to buy. It. I'm just saying, like, I have money, but I don't have stupid money. I just have enough. I have enough. Like, like there's people who are living paycheck to paycheck, and I'm like, I think I'm ten years ahead on that one. So Dubrovnik is Indian cuisine popular in Japan? It's popular in Nagoya. So Nagoya, Japan. That's another thing that for people to understand. Nagoya, Japan, is the fourth largest city. It is basically the home of Toyota. Toyota is actually Toyota City is on the eastern edge of Nagoya. But there's a lot of the, the Toyota supply chain is here in Nagoya. There's a tremendous amount of manufacturing. There's a ton of engineering going on. There's lots of foreign engineers who are here. Lots of engineers from India. I met somebody from Sri Lanka last night. There's a Sri Lankan restaurant like, I don't know, 100 yards away from my building. Um, Sri Lankan, I've seen Nepalese. Uh, cuisine there's I, I think i saw a vietnamese restaurant um so yeah there's a lot here uh, but yeah anyway so let me let me go back to to dark elon and tesla and just hit on this point that i want to stress this tesla is growing they're growing well i do expect for 2024 vehicle growth is going to slow a bit like we're we're still going to be on the 50% cumulative average growth rate by the end of 2023. You know, we deliver 1.8 million vehicles a, a year in the year. That's ahead of the less than 1.7 million that would be projected from 2020 50% annual growth. For 2024, I expect Tesla to fall behind on vehicles that 50% cumulative annual growth rate because they would have to hit like 2.5 million or 2.4 million in 2024. And I think they're probably going to be like 2.2 or 2.3 million in 2024. And maybe I'm being optimistic with 2.2 million. I don't know. Then you get into 2025. And I think they're still going to be a little bit slower on the growth. You know, Cybertruck will be fully ramped, but that's only 250,000 vehicles. And then you've got the next generation vehicle starts. And I think the next generation vehicle, there's an open question like, how fast does the next generation vehicle start? Are they going to go, you know, Ramp in 12 months, because it's going to be an easier ramp than Cybertruck. They've told us that. So are they going to start building it in Texas and Europe and China all at the same time? So we start seeing deliveries in 2025, and they've got three factories going with 500,000 units a year each quickly. That's possible. We may see, because we know they filed permits to build it in Berlin. We know they filed permits to build something in Berlin, 500,000 units. That's probably the next-gen vehicle. They haven't announced anything in China, but they're almost certainly going to build the vehicle in China as well. And then they're building in Texas and they're going to be building it in Mexico. So Mexico might be delayed a little bit, but they are they did say they're going to start building the factory. So they may be building the next gen vehicle in four places at once at 500,000 units a year. Well, that would be 4 million vehicles a year. And maybe that's 2026 that they get to 4 million vehicles a year. No, 2 million vehicles a year. Sorry, 2 million vehicles a year. And I think they ramp that over time. You're going to see that ramp to 8 million vehicles a year. And if I had criticisms of Tesla or concerns for Tesla, these are concerns that like I never hear Barry Glack or Meet Kevin talk about or James Catt talk about is the third and fourth largest car markets in the world roughly are India and Japan. You can pick which one's ahead. I think India might be higher in unit volume. Japan might be higher in revenue. On revenue, Germany might be ahead of India because Indian car prices are so low compared to German car prices. But. Tesla has shown no signs of cracking the Indian market at all. And they are not doing well in Japan. 
So if Tesla is going to hit that 20 million, at some point they have to sell vehicles in Japan and India. And that's hard. That is probably one of the hardest challenges that Tesla faces. And I don't see Barry Glack or Meet Kevin or James Cat talking about those. Meet Kevin had to sell most of his houses just to make the down payment on a $16 million jet. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not even buying a Cessna. No. Plenty of people speak English all over Eastern Europe, especially young women. I Maybe I'll try Eastern Europe. I don't know. Meet Kevin probably bought puts before earnings call, went on rant in hope of increasing his gains. I don't know. Um, Mark Potashnik says, it's getting to the point that it's hard to get enough cash for growth? Build three, three or four factories at once? Yes, I think, well, first of all, it's not necessarily building three or four factories at once. I think the next gen vehicle will be able to be built inside the existing Gigafactory. Uh, I think that's the plan is building it inside the existing Tesla Gigafactory. It's huge. The Texas factory is huge. They'll have to build a factory in China, but Tesla builds factories in China fast, and they already have permits to build the next build, the next building in Berlin. And, and there's plenty of cash. They got $26 billion in cash. They're, they grew their cash pile $3 billion. I think they build a factory for like $2 billion a pop. So that's not going to be a challenge. Surveys reveal many more people willing to consider EV if monthly payment is affordable growth is going to explode. Yeah, if people, there is the point that people don't understand how much money they're going to save on electricity versus gas and how much money they're going to save by not needing oil changes and not needing brakes and not needing, but those are all like long-term costs and people are looking at the short-term decision. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I, I want to stress this, Tesla energy growing like crazy. Tesla Energy is doing uh, 100 to 200% growth a year. Uh, oh, that was another thing. I wanted another thing on top of the earnings call. People freaked out about uh, Bihab Taneja, I think is the, how you pronounce his name, the new CFO. People freak. I, I honestly think that the criticism was borderline racist. Like, oh, he needs to, to speak more clearly. Like, you didn't like his accent? Like, I don't know what Deepak spoke like, but the CFO before... Um, before Zach was 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 Indian, um, you know, I thought he did a fine job. People are like, oh, Elon talked over him. Like Elon's never talked over anybody before. What are you talking about? I thought he did a fine job. It's his first time doing an earnings call. He'll get better. Get over it. But you know, people didn't want Zach when Zach was named CFO. People freaked out about that. Like people freak out about anything. But the guy's been with the company for a long time. He's been the chief accounting officer. I think he can hack the job. Get over it. Latvia ladies, many came and married the Australians, some are Russians originally. I, I, I'm not like, I like women. I don't necessarily care where they're from. But I, right now I'm traveling in Asia. Asia is a very low cost place to live. It is going to be cheaper for me to travel, spend 90 days in one country and 180 days in another country and 90 days in another country and just travel from country to country than it is to live in Florida. America is getting so expensive to live in. It's crazy. Um, yeah. All Indians who are not born in the USA, new CFO has an accent. That's it. Should give them a chance. Yeah. I don't know why people freaked out about that. It's this, it's so like, it's like everyone's looking for negatives, but like there's, there's this group of voices that gets very vocal and then Barry Glack gets featured on CNBC. So therefore he's an expert and he's a Tesla. He's a Tesla bull because CNBC calls him a Tesla bull. It's not a bull. You, you can't be a true Tesla bull unless you understand what the company does. They're not just a car company. Their energy is growing so fast that by 2030, you're going to see a 50x in energy in terms of, of uh, gigawatt hours produced storage deployed. You're going to see a 50x in Tesla energy and you're going to see a 10x in cars and you think it's a car company and margins are growing in energy. So if you're going to do one terawatt hour, you know, at at 30% margins or 40% margins, that's a hell of a lot better. Zach was a wuss, but he spoke English. Zach wasn't a wuss. I love Zach. Are American sports, NFL, NBA, MLB televised here? Uh, generally, well, first of all, I don't watch TV in Japan or America. Uh, I go to sports bars. Uh, I have a particular sports bar I go to and they show some sports, but I haven't, I don't think I've seen an NFL, NBA, or Major League Baseball game yet. 
I believe that Shohei Otani is playing for the California Angels and he's super popular. So it's possible that California Angels games, are they called the California Angels still? I don't know. Whatever the baseball team is, it's the Angels in Los Angeles. I believe that some of their games might be broadcast live here, but those are probably middle of the night. I just met like a surprising number of people who are Sho Shohei Otani fans, which is kind of like, I uh, forget the guy's name. He played for the Mariners for a long time, and he was on the uh, Miami Marlins, Florida Marlins, for a little while. Um, he was super popular in Japan when I was here before. Um, my brother-in-law married a Cambodian woman. When will the boring company drill the Rocky Mountains? I don't know that that's high up on the list. I don't watch TV. I have a TV right here. I have a TV right here. I've turned it on. I don't know. I watched a couple of sumo matches on it. Like a couple of days of the sumo tournament on it. Maybe not even that much. I, I turned it on like once or twice. I don't watch TV. I watch... I'm on X all the time and I watch YouTube videos. That's it. Um, aiming for what? Aiming for 200% SWB in 2030 solar wind battery. Yeah, yeah. Analysts can't evaluate stuff like bots that have zero sales now as they're in development. Some even admit not in the spreadsheet. Yeah, I, I think let's talk about that for a second. So RoboTaxi. You know, I, if you've watched my channel, you know my view on RoboTaxi, that RoboTaxi is this massive, massive, huge, huge thing for Tesla's future. That, and I pitch this all the time in Japan, in Japanese, no less. I explain this in Japanese because I'm trying to build a company to build a small RoboTaxi, right? And the pitch is that if you're riding a taxi, and I'll use U.S. numbers, you're riding a taxi in the United States, it's going to cost you about $3 a mile. The average cost of an Uber, Lyft, or taxi in America is somewhere in the ballpark of $2.50 to $3 a mile. And with, with self-driving EV robo-taxis, you're going to eliminate the cost of the driver and you're going to reduce the cost of the operating cost of the vehicle because it's more efficient. And that's going to drive that price down to maybe a dollar a mile. And, you know, if you listen to Kathy Woods and ARK Invest, they're going to drive the price down to 50 cents a mile, maybe even 25 cents a mile in the future on existing technology. So if you can look at a future, when you, when you have to have a really, really high volume of vehicles to drive the price down to 25 cents a mile, but if you can look at a future where Tesla owns 10 million robo-taxis and they're charging a dollar a mile for rides, which is one third of the price of an Uber or Lyft, there's plenty of market for it at a dollar a mile. And the cost of operating the soon-to-come robo-taxi vehicle is, let's say, $0.10 cents a mile, all-in, vehicle, amortization, insurance, and everything. Then you make about $50,000 a year in gross profit on the robo-taxi. Generate uh, $60,000. let us say 60% of the miles are paid because you've optimized your network. So 60% of the miles are paid. So you generate $60,000 in revenue. It costs you $10,000 to run 100,000 miles because you're $0.10 cents a mile. That's $50,000 in gross profit. Times 10 million vehicles is $500 million a year in gross profit. Tesla's gross profit last year was $20 billion. It's probably going to be less this year. That's at 25x in gross profit. And that doesn't include Tesla Energy, which is going to be you know, growing profit. Right? That's a huge, huge amount of profit. And if I'm wrong and it's only half of that, it's still an insane number. Right? It's still $250 billion. You really have to work, once RoboTaxi is live, you really have to work to make it less. Yeah, Ichiro, Ichiro. Thank you, Bruce Ryan. Ichiro Suzuki. Um, and then you've got Tesla Bot. Like the, 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 the value of Tesla Bot is off the chart. It's like so hard to wrap your head around the value of Tesla Bot. So my simple example is you've got some mundane business like a, a fast food restaurant, and they have 10 employees. And by bringing in bot, the bot doesn't do all the work of any one employee, but it does enough tasks that you only need nine employees instead of 10. So you're saving the employer one employee. This is a simple version of the story. Could very well be one bot saves enough that you don't need eight, you only need eight employees, but just going with a simple version that you're basically replacing one employee. And that one employee works 2,000 hours a year, right? And gets paid the cost of the employee, not just the wage, but all the costs that go associated with the employee cost the employer $20, $20 an hour. That's $40,000 a year you save the employer. And the bot works two shifts. So you just save the employer $80,000 a year. The bot probably works for 10 years. That's $800,000 in value generated. What's it cost to build a bot? It's going to cost less than building a car. 
It cost Tesla about $30,000 to build a Model 3. And a Model 3 weighs like 3,400, 3,500 pounds. And the bot weighs 125 pounds. So it's about 1 30th of the weight. 1 30th of the mass. So optimistically, they can produce the bot for 1 30th the cost of a Model 3. But let's say it's just a $10,000 vehicle. It's, it costs $10,000 to produce a bot. And it's worth $800,000 in value. So you sell it for $100,000, which is a massive bargain for the restaurant or any small business that's going to use it to replace one employee. Right? Well, you're making $90,000 in gross profit per bot. And the market for bot, it's like 100 million bots a year. So $90,000 times 100 million bots is like $9 trillion a year in, 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 in gross profit. You want to know where the growth is? That's where the growth is. And you think this isn't going to happen. You're just not paying attention. This bot is already walking. It's already doing yoga for crying out loud. I don't know if they were serious about the yoga thing. To Tesla production, is RoboTaxi possible soon? That's the whole thing. Okay, it's not about soon. If you're investing for 2030, it's whether uh, RoboTaxi will happen before, let's say, 2027, 2028. Right? If you're looking at 2030, then it doesn't matter. Did I see a video of Amazon robot grabbing carton and pulling it, putting on a conveyor belt? No, I didn't see that, but that's just like one little thing. Um, to test the production is measured on how well the machine is running, not how many cars are produced. It's a matter of quality, not quantity. Quantity, And look at all the improvements in how cars are produced. It's a whole bunch of things. It's being able to produce efficiently at high volume, low cost, Improving quality in a variety of ways. You know, they learn from car crashes to make the cars so they perform better in crashes. There's all kinds of things that they're doing. Still learning says, I live 20 miles to beach, $120 round trip by Uber, no way. Yeah, so if you imagine that drops to 50 cents a mile, then all of a sudden it's $10 to the beach. $20 round trip. 982R uses for 250,000 run rate is Cybertruck versus classic truck worth it? I don't understand the question. I think if Cybertruck is a hit and they can sell every one they make at, at, at reasonable margin, then they'll build more Cybertrucks later. Hope you can stay on or return on a later date to Japan. Not many gaijing stay here. I want to stay here. I, I need to get a visa. You know, do I decide to become an English teacher? Do I find some other job here? I really want to build my vehicle and uh, and I like having the freedom I have in life. I don't want to get stuck in a classroom if I don't want to. I mean, I don't know that I would hate teaching. I probably like teaching, but that's not really what I want to do. I want to build build little vehicles. I could get a spouse visa. That's that's kind of a risky proposition, too. You have to get a spouse first. Um, liked how smoothly Tesla bot could pose on one leg. Yeah, I think that, you know. The, the challenge with Tesla bot, as far as I'm concerned, is with the car, it has to learn to navigate space. It has to learn to navigate a limited subset of the space that, that we all operate in, roads. Bot has to navigate a much broader array of space, which I don't think is a particular challenge because it also moves a lot slower. <clears throat> um, and then bot has to manipulate objects with its hands, which is something that the car doesn't have to do. So there's a lot of learning there. Get a girlfriend or boyfriend for a visa. I would need a wife to get a spouse visa, but that's not really my. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't. That wouldn't be the end of the world. But that's not how I wanted to do it. I taught English in Japan before, and I think I was a good teacher. But um, working, I, I don't have a history of being a good employee. I mean, I was a, a good employee, but like I chafe at being told how to do my job. I, I, I like being my own boss and doing things my way. And that's another reason why Japan might not be for me. Um, so, you know, I can travel around Asia and I can come back to Japan. I can spend up to 180 days a year in Japan as a tourist. So uh, that's not terrible. If I spend, you know, 90 day, 90 day stints, I can do 90 day stints in Japan and stay in a place like this. This is a great place. I like where I am now. Yeah, I think that I think the market, if you look at that market cap, if you look at that model that I just posed for bot, where they make 100 million bots and they're generating $9 trillion in gross profit, and call it $5, billion, $5 trillion in net profit and get a 20, give it a 20 PE ratio, 
you're at 120 trillion dollar you're on 100 trillion dollar market cap there and a 20 PE ratio is low and then you've got the robo taxi network generating another 50 trillion dollars in market cap it's crazy i mean you, you it's 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 not that hard to see tesla become a 100 trillion dollar plus market cap and right now it's like a i don't know 600 million dollar market cap 600 billion dollar market cap there's a lot of growth there there's a lot more than 10x growth there so you know you can obsess about what margins are in q3 of 2023 or q4 of 2023 um, but you can look at the growth and you can look at tesla energy and you can look at the improvements we're seeing i mean pretty much everyone in ai understands you want a lot of data and you want a lot of compute and that's the approach tesla is pursuing Nobody else is generating data in the volume that Tesla's generating. Now, it's possible that somebody's going to come out with a better AI model that learns quicker on less data. That's possible. I could be an English coach for businessmen in Japan, a private tutor. I don't think there's a visa for that. I don't think there's a visa for that. Um, I haven't figured out the visa process yet, and I may not. <clears throat> When I lost my job and visa, I married in life now 15 years in Japan. Work is difficult, so spouse visa was for me as the solution. Yeah, look, look, if I find the right woman and we get married and we have children, that's what I really want. And if I can have a hobby of making prototypes, I don't think they're going to stop me from making prototypes. I think Dojo and the growing compute power is another thing folks miss. Yeah, there's, there, well, I don't think they talked about Dojo in the Q3 earnings call. I don't remember that Dojo came up very much. All right, I've been going for 90 minutes. I see, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to see that we have 417 people watching. So I'll really make a quick pitch. Please support me as a YouTube channel member. Please follow me on the X platform. It's WR4NYGov, you know, formerly known as Twitter. Please follow me on X. Please support me on X. Please support me on the Locals platform, warrenredlick.locals.com. Uh, check out my book, Shelby Hits the Fan, my new novel. Literally just published a few days ago. Uh, sold over 200 copies now, I think. It's on a bestseller list for Amazon. And while we're at it, my old book, Fair DUI, if you want to understand what happens in a traffic stop, this will become irrelevant with robo-taxis, but it's still relevant now. And yeah, the t-shirts at elonbits.com. Turn impossible into late. Um, I'm looking for Sally. Wore it every night out. Interesting. I don't get that. You got to be blonde and six feet tall. Japanese prototype babies, sure, sure. Yeah, all right. So um, I think I think we've gone long enough. I want to thank everybody for your support. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, you know, again, Tesla's this phenomenal growth story. If somebody can point me to a company that has a better growth story than Tesla for the future, please, you know, comment on this on this video don't don't include a link because youtube suppresses links that have, have suppresses comments that have links in them tell me the company tell me the story people will talk about palantir all the time like i i've i've looked into palantir i don't it's not that i it's not that i know it's not there it's just i don't understand the company i don't understand the growth story and no one who has pumped palantir to me has ever been able to explain what the company really does or what the growth story really is I'm not saying it's not there. I'm just saying I don't see it and no one's been able to explain it to me. So if you have that growth story, I think NVIDIA might be the great growth story. NVIDIA is a really high priced stock to buy into, but it is really a good growth story. So maybe NVIDIA is the answer to that. I do think there's a risk for NVIDIA that Dojo becomes a success and Dojo as a service outcompetes NVIDIA. But I think the market for AI training compute is going to be so large that it may not matter. So I think that's a big one. Um, Anti-gravity bras. So seriously, in, in the comments, not in the chat, in the comments, please, if you think there's some other growth story out there that I'm missing, post it, you know, post a comment saying, hey, this is the growth story. This is a short version of it. Here's the stock ticker or something like that so I can look it up. But I just, I haven't seen it. And, and don't give me Palantir. And don't give me that insurance company, Lemonade or whatever. That, I, I've seen that one. None of those really have a sales pitch that, sells me that there's a lot and because car insurance is a is going to die robo taxis are going to destroy car insurance self-driving cars aren't going to crash the crash rates are going to plummet the number of claims is going to plummet so car insurance is not a long-term growth story 
Palantir is a software AI data company. What does that mean? What do they do? What do they do? There's lots of software AI data companies. What does that mean? Explosive growth is scary. Yeah, I suppose explosive growth can be scary. Um, all right. Oh, Amit says, I still have my FSD anxiety. Interesting. Thank you for having me on, Amit. I really enjoyed being on your channel. I think that was a great conversation. Uh, don't put it in the chat. Put it in the comments and in the, in the comments on the video. I'll look at the comments later. I, if I see something impressive, I'll take a look at it. But by and large, most people, when they tell me a story, you should check out the stock. They don't really understand what the company does. They don't really have a growth story that makes sense. Tesla, I understand what the company does, right? We know they make EVs. We know they make energy storage products. We know they're building AI to drive cars. We know they're building AI to run robots. And there's more. They're building an AI system to train, you know, to do AI training. There's other things that Tesla does, but those, the big ones are they make EVs, they make energy products, they're making FSD, uh, you know, Tesla Vision, real world AI for the, the robo taxi and the bot. And I think there's gonna be other bots. I'm, I'm like, I'm like 90% convinced, and it's all in my own head. I'm 90% convinced they're going to build a roofing bot, a bot to do roofing like that. So I, but I understand what the company does, and I see the growth path for all these businesses. So is there a company out there that you see that not only has a business, like, so like Apple has an understandable business, right? I have an iPhone, right? I understand the business of Apple. But what's the growth path for Apple? They might have a 2x growth path. Do they have a 10x growth path for Apple? I don't think they have that, right? You know, is there something, you know, what's the company out there? You know, it's not General Motors, it's not Ford, it's not Citibank, you know, it's not, it's, you know, what, where's the company that has that really big growth potential? Is it BYD? I don't really understand the, I don't know if the accounting for Chinese companies is reliable. I'm not saying it isn't, I'm just saying I'm not sure. Neo, I don't think Neo's business model with battery swaps is it. I don't see that they're necessarily sustaining the growth that they need. Xpeng, I, I don't see it. Have they released what cathode material will be used at the new cathode plant in Austin? I'm pretty sure it's a nickel-based cathode. Um, I don't think they've been more specific than that. It's probably got some nickanese, nickel, nickel, manganese. I think they're trying to avoid cobalt. Military industrial complex will continue to grow. That's true, but I don't know how you invest in that. And I don't know if the growth is that big. Minesweepers. Could Tesla bot be a minesweeper? Tes Palantir does AI for the government data that's collected on citizens. I, I think they do something like that. I think they do more than that. I don't know that government spending on Palantir is going to 10x or 100x. That's the problem. And I don't know that corporations are buying in. You know, I, it's, not a be, it's not a business to consumer product. So it's hard to grasp because I'm a consumer and I don't run the kind of business that would use Palantir software. It's hard for me to grasp what they're doing. Okay, well, all right, I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, thank you everybody so much for uh, watching. Again, check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com, turn impossible into late. Check out my book. On Amazon, Shelby hits the fan. Uh, $2.99 on Kindle, $4.99 in paperback. Uh, support me on the locals platform. Support me on X, WR4NYGov. Support me here as a YouTube channel member. Support me on Patreon. Any way you want to support me is greatly appreciated. And let's go Tesla. Thanks everybody so much for watching. And thank you again to the moderators, uh, especially you know Jim, Mark, and Mark. Thank you guys so much for, for moderating the chat. Uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.